completely clear skies, high clouds, so I'm going to call it partly sunny. Overall, a nice day. I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. Sunshine, 38 degrees right now in downtown Seattle. I'm Lisa Brooks. Miss anything? Follow us on Facebook to get caught up. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM with Tom and Curly now on your drive home. From the Carter Subaru Studios, this is Ursula Show with G. Scott and Ursula Voitine. It's beautiful in Seattle today, 10.06, the G and Ursula Show. Fellas, some of y'all slack it with the vacuum. That's what Rachel Bell said, and she'll be coming in next to talk about that. And, of course, in scenarios, what to do when a married couple can't agree on the baby's name. Mm. Not the first name, but the last name. Oh, Ooh, yeah, I told you. I knew it was going to get good. But right now, let's get to the show. Uh, Ursula, we have here in studio two young men that are preparing for their greatest test ever. The NFL Combine. The person helping them prepare for that test, he's here in studio as well. Savan Ahmed by way of Juanita High School and the University of Washington. Hunter Bryant by way of Eastside Catholic and the University of Washington. And Tracy Ford, founder of Ford Sports Performance. Fellas, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. I'm going to start off right this. Um, the NFL Combine is coming up. You guys, I believe you leave on Sunday for the NFL Combine. Tracy Ford, help us understand um, what they are about to do. Um, well, this is obviously probably the biggest job interview in these young men's lives uh, to date. So um, they're going to go through, you know, almost five days of just rigorous interviews, um, testing, a lot of pulling and pulling and pinching on their body and just kind of really um, trying to figure out, um, you know, who these young men are and get a good grasp on them. And, you know, with Hunter and uh, Hunter and, Hunter and Savon, it's going to be very interesting, so they're going to get a lot of attention because they're juniors. Um, so with juniors, NFL scouts are going to, you know, be, you know, trying to seek as much information as they can uh, with these guys because they haven't seen them at any senior bowls, um, East-West shrines, any senior all-star games. So um, this is kind of their first time to actually see them, get to know them, touch them, feel them, um, and see exactly what they're um, what they're about, um, just both intellectually and physically. So. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to, it's going to be a long, long week, but, um, you know, these guys are, you know, both extremely, um, prepared and mentally strong for the, um, the, the task that's going to be at hand. Savon, how you feel, man? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I feel overly prepared. I never felt more prepared for something in my life. Um, you know, it's something you dream of going to the combine, um, and being able to put your, put your skills on display. And so, you know, I've been, I've been training with these combine guys since I was about, 14, 15 years old, I've seen so many draft classes because Tracy, you know, I was fortunate enough to to be around those guys from an early age. So, you know, going into it, I knew what I was getting myself into. And, you know, it's been everything I could dream of. And, and I'm ready to go, ready to go do it. And ready, I'm, I want to do it for Tracy. I want to do it for Tracy as well as my family just to kind of, you know, this is something we've been, we've been talking about for a long time. So I'm excited and I'm ready and I just, just can't wait to go do it. I want to ask both of you. So I'll start with Hunter. You both have one year of eligibility remaining. Why leave now? Um, I felt like it was the right time for me to leave. And it's always been my dream to go to the NFL and be a professional uh, football player in the league. And I mean, that's been my goal since I was five. And so to do what I did at the University of Washington and to like do what I love to do, which is play football and help them win games, and like was able to put me in a position where I feel like I could come out and pursue my dreams and my passion. And so I thought it was just the right time and the right decision for me to make. Yeah, for me, I just I felt ready physically and mentally. Um, you know, going into the season, I knew that I wanted to leave after this year. But I had, I had goals. It wasn't an irrational decision by me. I had goals that, you know, I wanted to make sure I marked off 10-plus touchdowns, 1,000 yards. I wanted to make sure I did those things. If I didn't do those things, I wasn't going to leave just because I didn't feel like, you know, I, I did everything I could at this school to feel to feel confident about myself. So, you know, I, I, I marked off those goals and, and that was, that was kind of the seal, the seal and deal for me to be like, hey, this, this is what I'm ready to do. And, you know, I've been wanting to do it since I was six years old. So um, the, 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 ch the chance is here to make it happen. The NFL Combine is on television. We're going to be all watching that, not this weekend, but next weekend. We're all going to be fascinated by the 40s and the bench press and 
all of these different things. And then I always be sitting back like, man, how do they look like that? What do y'all be doing? Like, this has been a six-week process. Take us through that. What do you guys be doing to get prepared for this? Are you on diets? Help us understand. I mean, the diet. I think the diet is the most crucial part. Uh, it's not good. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Like, the food is good. Like, I can't wait to go what home and eat it. What is the diet? What is the diet? It's, I mean, it's it's your regular food. Chicken, rice, bunch of vegetables, but it's no seasoning or anything. I mean, they're seasoning. I'm not going to say they're, they're seasoning. They're no, seasoning, nothing but, you know. Nothing fried. Nothing, yeah, 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 it's, it's, like, it's nothing like that. So it's hard. It's hard to eat it sometimes. Cause it's, you have dessert? No, there's no. I mean, I eat, I eat dry mangoes for dessert. Oh. So that's that's pretty good. I look forward to that. I drink our shakes for dessert because they got a vanilla fa- flavor to them. But, uh, yeah, that's that's really the main part outside of the workouts. You know, I know we're working harder than everybody else. I know Tracy you has get, us working. Do you so. get a cheat day? We had a cheat day. We what, had two. What, what happened, Hunter? How many pounds did you gain on that uh, cheat day? <laughs> I put on 14 pounds in a day on that cheat day. <laughs> You're kidding me. Then again, <laughs> I guess that's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? Um, I just started eating all day. I <laughs> everything I wanted the whole time. And- it was crazy, like how, like hard we're training, how fast our metabolism is. I lost that weight within two days, and so I put on fourteen pounds and lost it two days later. And so, Man. I mean, Tracy really got our bodies. Just, I mean, I don't even care that you guys have the opportunity to make a lot of money. I'm really jealous that you could just throw fourteen pounds away in two days. Do you know what I would do <laughs> with fourteen oh, pounds you know in I two days? Do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask uh, Tracy. You talked about with the NFL Combine, and you use the words pulling and prodding and put are you saying literally uh yeah i mean they're gonna tug and pull at these uh young men's ligaments uh you know and they want to see you know are they healthy you know they're probably gonna grab their knee and they're gonna bend their knee around and grab their shoulders bend their shoulders around and um you know it's just you know it's it's really just saying hey they're gonna be worth a big investment so um you know we want to make sure our investment is uh our money is put in the right place so you know, that's just the nature of the business. That's the nature of the beast. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just extremely proud of both these young men because, uh, like I said, I've seen them all grow up. And, um, you know, I, I just told them that while as we were as we were driving up here, you know, I just it had a, a burst in, in my heart just to be like, man, I'm 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 excited for him. I'm, I'm excited for him. The time is now. We've kind of been waiting for this time for for a while. And, um, you know, these guys are the two guys that are kind of originally, um, you know, kind of really kind of put our brand, you know, on the map and our and our, and our stamp on the map just from a seven-on-seven seven standpoint. And to see these guys, you know, have the opportunity to do it now and to change the family's dynamic is extremely uh, phenomenal. So, but, yeah, to answer that, there's going to be a lot of pulling and tugging. And, um, you know, it's their investment. But, again, they're, you know, I, I, they're, they're, they're ready for it. The, that's the voices of Savan Ahmed and Hunter Bryant from the University of Washington as they prepare for the NFL Combine, one of the biggest tests in their lives, and the person that is getting them prepared for it, Tracy Ford, founder of Sports Sports Performance, is here as well. You said that you are overly prepared. What did, what went into that preparation? And at what point, you said you started at a very young age, at what point did you know, I want to play pro football? Yeah, as far as being overly prepared, like I said, you know, I started training with Tracy when I was 14, and I actually tell you the story when I first got there, and I know he remembers this. I had one of my teammates, uh, Landon Milburn, bring me in, and um, he was like, yeah, I've been working out with Tracy, this dude, you should try it out, and I'm like, all right, man, whatever, like, let's go. We go we go work out, we're doing our field work, and I remember we're doing we're doing a dumbbell, dumbbell, dumbbell press above our shoulders, and I'm sitting there kind of queasy, like, man, I'm, I think I'm about to throw up. <laughs> and and I'm I'm trying to live, I'm trying to get through it and, and I ended up going to throw up and you know that was kinda that was kinda the start of the story and I never stopped going back because I just kinda saw what it takes to be great. And uh, you know, from the beginning Chase has been a guy that, that's believing in me. Um and then as far as just being over overly prepared, um I've been I've been doing this stuff. You know, I've been doing it for a long time. Um and now just to really focus on it for two months, you're overly prepared for it. You're overly prepared for it. So when the moment comes it's 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 it's, a, it's another rep, but this one just the one that matters, and so um, that's just that's just kind of what's gone into this whole thing. Hometown kids, both born and raised here, played your football at the University of Washington. Let's talk about that. How was it? How was it playing for Chris Peterson in the University of Washington? Hunter Bryant. Um, I think it was a blessing, really, just having being homegrown and being from Seattle and going to the games growing up, and then actually playing on that field. 
in front of fans that really love you and love the team and love the program. Um, I don't think I would want to play anywhere else. Um, it was really just a blessing overall. And playing for Coach Pete, and he really taught me how to be a man off the field and taught me, like, the whole Built for Life uh, program that he ran taught me the importance of how, like, you do the little things, how you do all things, but in every aspect of your life, not just football. And, like, taking that into my, like, combine prep right now is huge. Like, he taught me how just to really – be so detailed in everything I do and how everything is important and coming in here and being able to work on the same thing every single day for two months trying to prepare for one rep um I think that's everything I needed and he prepared me in the perfect way so Vaughn how reflect on playing for Chris Peterson at University of Washington yeah definitely you know going into this this whole decision you know I, I know how to be a football player I know how to turn it on when I'm on the field and I know how to I know how to do that but I think he what he focused on was being in being a man outside of football, and that's what I, you know, I really took away from him. I, you know, he, he had a lot of great football stuff, and he was a phenomenal football coach, but, you know, I think anyone would, would say that outside of football, that's what he really wanted to focus on. He wanted to develop you as a as a man, and so um, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more thankful for him with that, and, you know, overall, he made my experience at UW uh, better. He made it easier. Um, you know, he was a phenomenal coach, and I know he'll be missed in college football, so but yeah, just playing in front of playing in front of my hometown, being able to you know go train with Tracy in the off season, being able to train with Hunter this whole time, being able to be around those type of people, it was a it was an opportunity that I couldn't I couldn't let go away. So you know I'm definitely thankful for Washington, thankful for the fans, thankful for all my teammates, and thankful for the coaches that I had while I was there. My husband and I are among the fans. My husband especially, we've been season ticket holders for over 20 years, and uh, the love that is there at Husky Stadium for you guys and what you do. I know that um, we appreciate everything that you do on the field, and it's so great to hear these great things that you're doing off the field as well. What are your thoughts on uh, Coach Lake? Yeah, I'm excited for Coach Lake. Uh, you know, Everyone that's there knows that he's a guy that's going to attack everything. Uh, he, just, he has that defensive mentality that gonna, he's going to bring to the whole team. So um, I, don't, I don't see any drop-off with those guys. You know, he's going to – He's gonna recruit, and he's gonna get he's gonna get the right guys in there. And so I'm ex I'm so excited to see what he's gonna do with the opportunity of being a head coach. I know he's gonna attack it. You know our defense has always been something that's you know that we hold to a standard. You know as far you know overall team, but you know everyone knows that Washington defense is is the real deal. And so you know he's just gonna bring that mentality to the whole team, and I think it's it's definitely gonna make a difference. As you guys are preparing for this uh, NFL Combine again, we're gonna be watching it on TV. Your, the process of the NFL Draft. And we we only see like the good stuff, right? Kind of take us behind the scenes. What are some things that make you nervous about this process? Um, it's got you kind of nervous. I think one thing that got me nervous is just how busy everything's going to be, and how we're only going to get four to five hours of sleep um, for the like the four days leading up to when we have to run and test. And I think, I mean, they do that on purpose to see how we respond to just being tested like that and being like our mental checked out and our physical checked out and having to spend a whole day in the hospital uh, again MRIs and x-rays and being with doctors and then going to be with the GMs and head coaches of teams and having interviews with them and then we have to go test and show our skills on the field and I think I mean it doesn't really have me nervous but more excited just because like I know what was coming and I know like about this my whole life and I'm finally being able to do it and it's pretty exciting and a blessing but I mean just the whole like this whole thing is just one big test so I think we're ready for it what round are you guys hoping to get drafted on? Have you thought through first that? Round. Yeah. <laughs> first round. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be obvious, right? Awesome, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but realistically. Um, realistically, it's your earliest projection. You know, I haven't really looked into a lot, a lot of those things, but I hope I go at my earliest projection. I know, you know, I go do everything I'm supposed to do and, um, you know, just take care of my, my training and, and, and put it on the line all when it's there. I hope I go at my earliest projection for sure. Now, Tracy, you train – NFL players, NFL stars, Bobby Wagner, K.J. Wright, a lot of these NFL guys that come in. And then, of course, you, you train some of the college guys. But this is preparing for a test. What's the difference? How do you, what is the difference between training a Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright and training Savan Ahmed and Hunter Bryant? Um, you know, it's a it's a huge difference just because, you know, their days are, are just so long and mapped out. You know, you have – 
you know, you have so much work to do with so much limited time. So every single hour matters. Everything has to be mapped out. And, you know, you've got to be really strategic on, you know, when these guys are peaking, when they're, when they're, when they have to cut back, when they have to push themselves, when they have to have a heavier load. And um, so we just get more time with them. I think, you know, obviously training a lot of the guys for the NFL offseason, you know, they're going to come in and they're going to train for two and a half hours. Well, with the combine, they're going to come in and they're probably going to be there for, you know, their day is going to last almost like a nine to five because it's a job, you know. And so just I, I think there's a big difference is, you know, understanding for these young men how to be pros. And this is that. This is that part of their life where they kind of understand right now and they can utilize this process on how to be a pro, meaning how to utilize your spare time, making sure that you take care of your body, making sure that you treat your body like a temple, making sure that you're using, getting the um, amount of rest that you have because you know you're going to have to put your body at, at an optimal um, uh, point where you're going to have to push yourself past your threshold. So, um, you know, I think it's very different. Um, you have to be very strategic. Um, you know, this is a time of the year for us where – you know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And, um, you know, it's what they're, you know, what they came in on and how they're going to leave and, you know, how fast they can be and how strong they can be. So, you know, for me, it's just, you know, letting these guys be the best version of themselves possible and being able to get everything out of them um, that they can in order to, you know, help their draft stack out as much as they can. As a parent, if I'm listening to this conversation, I'm thinking, you know, my my boy is really interested in football you know he's seven or eight or nine at what age do you kind of think okay you need to get more serious about it if you want to end up you know with potentially a college career or, do, or should you even worry about it does it just happen uh it definitely just doesn't happen um but i think you know around you know you get in about eighth grade where you're going to be a ninth grader it's like yeah you got to start focusing you know I, I i believe in kids at a young age playing multiple sports um, I don't really believe in too much of the specialized mm -hmm. training so young. You know, be a kid, have fun, keep it fun. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to start seeing, you know, what you really love. You know, I have a seven-year-old son. I have, I have three boys. So, you know, but my oldest is seven. And, uh, you know, he plays all types of sports. And I want him to play all types of sports because you're going to see what you what you really love and what you fall in love with. And there, as you hear both Hunter and Savon, they fell in love with the game of football at a very young age, one at five, one at six. They knew what they kind of wanted to do. But – if you ask these guys, they all probably play multiple sports throughout this time. And right now, and I think in this day and age, is there's so many people that are trying to do the specialized training so early. And it's great to do, and I'm in the business, in the industry, so, um, you know, it's great to do, but you've got to let these guy, kids, you know, play as much sports mm -hmm. as they can, um, figure out what they want to do, get them, get them training, get them a routine, which gives them some discipline. Um, but at the end of the day, when it's basketball season, man, let them go play basketball. Right. You know, when it's baseball season or track, let them go let them go play everything. But, you know, when you start to touch down in that, you know, eighth grade, going to be a ninth grade, you got to start focusing up. Like, it's just, it's get the competition is too much. The recruiting process for a high school kid starts way too early. So at that point, it's like, yeah, you need to start focusing on what you want to do because there's other guys that are going to be focused and the separation is going to start separating themselves uh, real fast. So, you know, to answer that question, I think, you know, around eighth grade, going, going into ninth grade is when you kind of have to start figuring out, okay, what is exactly that you want to do because realistically you only got three years to do it. It's not four. It's three years to do it. And if you think about a plan, when I see eighth graders, I'm, I'm not looking at it as a four-year plan to get you out of high school. It's almost like a seven- to eight-year plan. So at one point they can be sitting in the chair like these two young men are right across from me and having the opportunity to change their family dynamic because they put in the work at a young age and understood what it took. Well, there it is. Hunter Bryant, Savan Ahmed. All the best of luck to you. Good luck. Hope you guys Appreciate pass that you. test That's with great. flying colors. Thank hope you guys run fast 40s and are really strong. And when they poke and prod at you, I hope your knee and back and ankles and everything holds up. Yeah, it will be good. Appreciate and, you Oh, guys. and then you got an interview process, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to pass the interview. Well, I hope th I hope. This show, the Gene Ursula show, got y'all ready for the interview. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Uh, really appreciate it. And Tracy Ford, thank you for thank coming you. in, man. Thank appreciate you. it. Rachel Bell stops by next. She'll say, she says that all young men are slacking. And we should all take a lesson from the Amish. Gene Ursula show. This hour of the Gene Ursula show brought to you by Farah.com. 
Have something to say? Join the conversation. 98973. 98973. 98973. Okay, stop. This is just awesome. Send us a text at 98973. Powered by State Roofing. We are reading every single one of them. Oh, we read your text. Brilliant, 425. 1877 Cars for Kids. K A R S Cars for Kids. 1877 Cards for Kids. Donate your car today. 1877 Cards for Kids. 